My name is Sarah Stern. I am the founder and president of the Endowment for Middle East Truth, or EMET, and it is indeed my pleasure to welcome all of you here today um, to discuss what is perhaps the most important and existential conflict of our time, and that is um, what to do about Iran, um, what the Iranians' true intentions are, and um, what exactly was this joint plan of action that was um, signed in Geneva, or not signed, or not signed, uh, that was agreed upon um, in Geneva? Um, we actually could not have a more capable and qualified group of people to come um, discuss with us today. Um, but before I introduce our guests, I would just like to say that we are honored to be co-sponsoring this with the Center for Security Policy. And I have to my right my dear colleague, not literally or figuratively, I mean just literally, physically, uh, my dear colleague Ben Lerner um, from the Center for Security Policy. Um, and he's going to say a few words, and then I will take it and introduce the panel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. And let me just quickly welcome all of you to this panel on behalf of the Center for Security Policy. We are honored to be co-sponsoring this important discussion with our friends at the Endowment for Middle East Truth. There are few topics more urgent today than the ever-escalating prospect of an Iranian nuclear weapon. Such a development, if it comes about, will be a game-changing development for the Middle East and, indeed, international security writ large. We are at this point, I would argue, because too many, both in the United States and elsewhere, even after everything that has happened since 1979, still fundamentally do not understand what is at stake here, what it would mean for the United States and our allies if the mullahs of Tehran got their hands on a nuclear weapon. And if we think we're having a hard time now in places like Iraq, if we're concerned now about Iran's reach into Latin America, how will those situations look with an Iranian nuclear weapon in the picture to say nothing of what it means for our allies in Israel and throughout the Middle East? Things only get worse for the U.S. and our allies if Iran is allowed to go nuclear and is allowed to put this weapons capability fully behind its blatantly genocidal and supremacist intent. Uh, and with that, I defer to this esteemed panel to walk you through the particulars of this threat. Thank you very much. were enthralled by the soft, charming words of President Hassan Rouhani when he spoke at the United Nations. Um, among the soft and charming words from Mr. Rouhani were these, nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction have no place in Iran's security and defense and contradict our fundamental religious and ethical convictions. He expressed the hope of universal acceptance by the people and the elite all across the globe of yes to peace and no to war, for the hope of a um, reference of dialogue over conflict and no to extremism. On November 24th, much of the international community and the media were enthralled when Secretary of State John Kerry announced that a deal, or a joint plan of action, had been concluded in Geneva between Iran and the P5 plus one nations, the United States, Great Britain, France, Russia, and China plus Germany. On December 12th, when asked in front of Congress and questioned very hard by some of our wonderful members, um, Wendy Sherman and David Cohn had said that new sanctions were going to be invoked against Iran, at which point um, the P5 plus one talks had been convening in Vienna, and the Iranians walked out saying that this is not the agreement that we had agreed to. We are here today to examine what the true intentions of the Iranian mullahs actually are, and um, whether the soft, flowery rhetoric that President Hassan Rouhani had been using in the United Nations actually reflects the reality on the ground. So here to discuss these issues, we could not have a more competent and capable panel. Dr. 
Waleed Farah serves as an advisor to the Anti-Terrorism Caucus in the U.S. House of Representatives and is co-secretary general of the Transatlantic Legislative Group on Counterterrorism. Um, he has testified before our Congress numerous times, the European Parliament and the United Nations Security Council on matters related to the international security and to the Middle East conflict. Each one of these bios are several, several pages long. I would like to just recommend um, several of the books that Dr. Walid Farris has published um, in English, Arabic, and French, including um, three post-9-11 volumes, Future Jihad, Terror Strategies Against the West, The War of Ideas, Jihadism Against Democracy and Confrontation, and Winning the War Against Future Jihad. I, I don't know what the total number of books is that Dr. <laughs> Fariz had, um, had published, but usually it's more than a single average person reads in a lifetime. <laughs> really. um, Claire Lopez is a strategic policy and intelligence expert with a focus on national defense, Islam, Iran, and counterterrorism issues. Currently, she's a senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy, the Clarion Pod Project, the London Center for Policy Research, and the Canadian Mian, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Mian Institute and Vice President of the Intelligence Summit. She formerly was a career operations officer with the Central Intelligence Agency and a professor of the Center for Counterintelligence and Security Studies. Um, she is the author of an acclaimed paper for the Center for Security po Policy, The Rise of the Iran Lobby, and she's co-authored uh, two published books on Iran. Okay, and she is also the co-author and editor of the Center for Security Policy's landmark study, Sharia, the Threat to America. Mark Lantham is a noted security analyst who in 1991 created a three-dimensional topographical raised relief map system of Israel. Viewing the 3D Israel map, one can easily and quickly be informed of many of the underlying resource and security issues involved in the Israeli-Arab conflict, such as the West Bank water resources and Israel's defensible borders. Over the past 20 years, Mark has briefed many congressional and Senate offices, the United States Joint Chiefs of Staff Israel Desk, and the New York Times Editorial Board. Mark has written and published seminal articles concerning the Israeli Middle East region, including the 1992 demilitarization risks, warning of a future of Palestinian Katusha rocket barrages from vacated Israeli territory, and the 1995 U.S. troops on Golan quicksand. I would also like to say that Mark is mentioned in a very important article by our colleague Cliff May from the Foundation of Defense of D Democracies in Commentary Magazine this month for the wonderful topographical maps that he's about to show. And um, Dr. Andrew Boston is the author of the highly acclaimed work, The Legacy of Jihad, Islamic Holy War, and the Fate of Non-Muslims, The Legacy of Islamic Anti-Semitism from Sacred Text to Solemn History. Sharia versus Freedom, The Legacy of Islamic Totalitarianism, and the recent monograph, The Mufti's Islamic Jew Hatred, What the Nazis Learned from the Muslim Pope. Dr. Boston's forthcoming monograph is entitled, Iran's Final Solution for Israel, The Legacy of Shi Shiite Islamic Jew Hatred in Iran. Dr. Boston has published numerous articles and commentaries on Islam in the New York Post, Washington Times, the New York Daily News, Pajamas Media, National Review Online, The American Thinker, Front Page Mag, and other um, print and online publications.